Welcome. This is Darby. Again. Can you believe it? I'm still here. That must mean they don't believe I exist. And I don't. But what better way to be if they can't see me? They being the sensors. But we're going to test it today. I have a poem. Many people will not like the poem. Some people will love the poem. See, deep down inside, you might have noticed, even on the surface, I'm a little bit of a kind of an environmentalist in one respect. Complete respect. That's my one respect. I completely respect my environment if I can do it. I completely respect it and try to do as much as I can not to contaminate it, not to pollute it, not to make it nasty so the next person down the line that comes along has to clean my mess up. I'm in the process of doing that. Hey, Chris. Thanks. Nice to be chummy. Um, my property had a lot of problems with it when I bought it. I didn't know about it. And I've been working on it. Remediation, cleaning, digging, creating water, places for animals to live. All that good stuff. Now, um, one of the things we're looking at today is what is the environmental damage of various things we do? Because people talk about, oh, CO2 and causing a global warming. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's old stuff, isn't it? That's like... Um, we talk about pollution, absolutely. Um, the pollution from oil, the pollution from making gold. You realize how much pollution comes from processing gold. It's really, it's just horrible. And when they flushed out that mine into the river that went through the Native American nation and pretty much polluted all their drinking water, their fishing water and everything, that was that nasty crap. Hey, Suzanne, hi. So, I'm here today to talk about an impending environmental night. It's not going to go away. This isn't just a nightmare in a book. It is in the book. It's absolutely in the book. Don't get me wrong. I'm speaking about the book of Wibble Ray and Wub, and we're talking about that now as we speak. You are hearing, not from a news reporter, because that would mean it would be fact, and I would be dressed in a suit, and I'd have a tie on, and I'd look all legitimate. I don't. So, thus having destroyed my own legitimacy there, and saying this is a writer talking about a fictional chapter in a book called Wibblery and Wub, W-U-B. And it's about how we, all of the eyes together, go out there with me, me, that's these two eyes in my spiritual eye, that forms the M-I-I of me. Now, if me goes out and we get together, and all these eyes form this world union of beings, we might be able to do something about some of these problems in the world, like pollution. You know what's worse than pollution? Unnecessary pollution. Some pollution is almost necessary. If you're going to get your daddy to the hospital and you got to get in that ambulance or car to get there and you have to create all that pollution out of that car to get there, well, that's kind of necessary. Now, you could walk down the street. It's 18 blocks away. and You could walk, but Grandpa's having a heart attack. Not so good. It's necessary to use a car. Make the pollution. Thank you. I think that's the humidity getting my hair all fresh looking. Mm -hmm. um, what we're looking at, hey, Doris, what I'm, I'm about to discuss is going to make a lot of people really mad, particularly Biden, or more, more importantly, Fossey in the book. The, when, in the book of the bid on president, you know, where the bid on and, and commie get in there in the next chapter or the last chapter, actually, they got in officially now, but they're kind of in, in the book. So while they're pretending to be president and vice president, they're passing a bunch of shit. I mean, new rules, laws, uh, and stuff like that. And in the book, it's like these crazy things. You wouldn't expect anybody to do, like make make an executive order against saying the, the Chinese cold or the Chinese syphilis or whatever, calling something. You're going to make an executive order as president in the book to go ahead and say, oh, you can't do that, can't do that. You make dictates. Lots and lots of dictates. In the book, it makes the dictator, the one making all the dictates, he's an or, a dictator, that's what it looks like in the book. Of course, this is again total fiction. Now, guess what? I, I, I'm not sure I recognize the guy anymore because every time he's got a mask over his face, I can't really tell what's going on. Now, 
rich people, they can afford rich masks. And they wash them out, of course. Somebody cleans them out, dries them out for them, all that stuff, right? I suppose. But what about the rest of people? So I decided to do a few numbers. Yeah, numbers. I love numbers. Statistics. Yeah. And so I made myself a note or two because I thought it was really important to consider a couple things. For example, do you know that we have, you know how many people are on the site? The United States, 300 and roughly 24 million people. Now, if every one of those 324 million people had to go ahead and get themselves a mask and put it on in the morning, that'd be crazy. Nobody's going to do that. We're babies and stuff. No. So let's just say, hey, 100 million people. That's the working population, shopping, going out. 100 million people is all. A day. Put on a mask. Cool. That's 100 million masks today. Oh, no. Now we're putting on two masks each. That'd be 200 million masks a day. Oh, no. We're going to reuse our masks. We're going to go ahead and use those crappy things that we breathed into all day yesterday. And all those people got rotten teeth, bleeding all that bacteria in there. And it had this moist environment. And it's making a really nasty soup inside of there. You look inside some of those masks. And if you put that mask on by mistake, you're going to probably get sick. Because it could be all sorts of other things in there, too. Same for you. You're supposed to breathe through your nose. A, not your mouth. So that your nose will make your antibodies. Now, here's the good part. Guys, I said if only 100 million Americans, Americans, I'm not counting Chinese. I'm not counting any other country in the world that's also making masks and putting them on people. Imagine now, you got to take a picture and I don't have any with me, but there's plenty of them out there right now. Of birds with masks on. You know, birds wear masks. No, they would do when they stick their neck to the damn thing and they can't get it off. Now they're wearing a mask. Looks like a bra. Sitting on the body of that dead bird. When they find it, they trap their wings. Do you realize what a hundred million masks look like in a big pile? Now, just suppose all you people wear a mask. I know you wouldn't dare throw that sucker down on the ground with all that nastiness in it. You'd be a good, proper human being and citizen and go over there and make sure that goes into your little plastic bag you carry with you so all your nasty old germs stay with you until you get them home. So you can throw them in the garbage can so that really nice man in the garbage truck can come by and pick them up and carry your nasty old germs and your nasty old 100 million masks a day at one mask. Or at two masks, that's 200 million masks a day in America with only one third of our population. 200 million a day. Oh, well, let's just say two thirds of our population gets out because it's a big event. Holy crap. 200 million people wearing two masks, that's 400 million masks in one day. 400 million times 365. Anybody want to run that number real quick for me? Yeah. Just add zeros. Three. Four times three. Twelve trillion masks. I'm American now, guys. I mean, as far as you can run these numbers real fast when you start thinking about, wait a second. That's two a day, but I had to change them. Of course you did. Well, what'd you do with that mask? You put that in a plastic bag, put it in a trash can for me? Am I going to have to go out there and pick up your ugly-ass, stinky, ratty mask? Because I'm seeing them all over. Now, we have a place called Salvage, Texas, where people get to come, stay in these B&B in this fantasy land. Fantasy land, because you can't find it on the map. Guess what? I have fine masks out here. On the ground. We ain't got no COVID. But I got masks. I got masks outside the dang highway. I got masks blowing in the wind. I got masks in trees. I'm going to bet we got masks in the ice and masks in the water, masks in the creeks. Guess what? It inspired me to write a poem. Yeah. This is the good part. Admittedly, this is a first draft. First draft. So, mankind asphyxiation and society killing systems. Masks. That's an acronym. Mankind asphyxiation. Because it reduces your oxygen intake, causes you to have, uh, in many cases, with two masks on. Oh, I went blind. Come back. Okay. That cameraman, he's up to 
crazy crap sometimes when I try to make this information out there. But suppose for a second, just suppose, you drop your oxygen levels down below 90, just like you're having a problem at night, for which you would normally take a, um, some sort of instrument in your mouth or something like that to deal with your sleep apnea. If you're not breathing through your nose, your nose has been broke before, that's a problem. You'll get early Alzheimer's, possibly lucidity. So not breathing through your nose is extremely bad. Not to mention all your antibodies are created in the back of your nose, in your sinuses. So if you constantly have sinus problems and you don't breathe through your nose, chances are you're sick. A lot. And if you get antibiotics and you take them in, your intestinal tract is just want for some flora, something to digest food with, some bacteria to make the... Yes, the cures for everything goes in your nose comes out of the flora and the bacteria that produce the things you need to cure yourself. Wow, what a surprise. I'm not a doctor. I am an imaginary head talking on the screen that is a fictional character that you absolutely do not, absolutely do not come and try to sue me or blame me because you got sick because you went and did something stupid and you got to have somebody to blame like that girl that put Gorilla Glue in her hair and she's suing Gorilla Glue because she didn't know you couldn't use it as a hairspray. I heard that today. You almost got to put that in a book. That's a reality. So, masks. Okay. Now, I want to point this out because if you want to think about this, I went through what America's going to produce at 200 million masks a day with one third of our population wearing them. Or... At two masks a day per person, two-thirds of our population, 400 million masks a day. Now, some of them will be cloth masks, some of them will be other kinds of crappy masks, but get the fact is, trim off a few million or billion of them. So what? I didn't even get to the other countries yet. Throw in China's 1.4 billion people. Mandatory masks. Throw in India's 1.2 billion people. Mandatory masks. Throw in Europe. Mandatory masks. And double the masks up just for the heck of it. And who's selling masks? I wish I was. You had to have the president force anybody to go start making masks? Oh my God. Could you think of a more profitable business to be in right now than mask making? Decorative masks. Pretty masks. Masks with your name. Masks telling people kiss off and censored and I said I'm gonna tell you what so shall I my wife home here see where do the masks go full of COVID don't you know who picks them up who lets them fall you now two masks at once to make a dunce of anyone who does that stunt stunt the body stunt the mind stunt the world with what you find it's truly just a way to feel you may be safe. But that's not real. The litter left upon the globe. Compared to CO2, I goad. The ones who claim such things as thee, you trash the world with waste, you see. Kill the birds, the fish, the seas. Yet no one thinks about the wheeze. Thus comes the wub to you from me. M-I-I. Now, the perspective is everything. What's your perspective? Do you give a darn? Nah. Do you think that everybody should be wearing two masks? Now, I've had a mask on a few times, so I can't get into some buildings with them. But now down in Texas, we're kind of easy going on that. And you know what? We aren't exactly losing billions of people, millions of people to COVID, by the way. One of my guys I'm working with right now is almost 80 years old. He's a builder. Came down here, lived down here about three years, and he had COVID. And he's having a little trouble getting around, but he's not dead. He made it through it, as many of them do. We've had people 90 years old, 100 years old. If you do the right treatments, Cuomo, come on, come on, come on, come on, wacko. When somebody brags about having low statistics, and then it turns out they lied, you know how much I like liars. 
They lie and they put old people into old folks' homes and had a huge number of them dying off and just had to go ahead and delay issuing those statistics because they didn't fit in with the storyline. You know, kind of like if you're having an impeachment and all of a sudden people keep putting up shit that's not true up there in the book. That's what they're doing in this next chapter. You wouldn't believe the stuff they're doing in the next chapter. You almost would think that they didn't know they'd get caught in lies. Now, guess what I understood? As I was thinking all of a sudden, well, what if, what if, just what if, all of a sudden, we got to have witnesses on this whole thing and got to call in some other people and they got to bring in some rebuttal, some facts, some of that information as far as who actually orchestrated, who had the texts, who had the, 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 the conversations going on and why, how could we know that? Why, thank you, NSA. Oh, we have some of the best, best monitoring systems in the world, thanks to the Clintons and Obama and the Bushes. Man, they made it so easy to track people. They just didn't know how to sort the information. And see, T, he got in there, sorted that information out with his, the guys got in there and actually figured out how to track stuff. Uh, except for those blackberries that uh, the C crowd was carrying around and stuff like that in the book. There's this whole secret communications network using games online where you go on the game and actually communicate with people, but it looked like you're playing the game and you weren't. Or you get a BlackBerry special, special, special. I never even had a BlackBerry. I hardly even knew why you'd want one, but I know why they wanted one. Because you know what? BlackBerry is a really good way to go ahead and get into human trafficking and crime and stuff like that and uh, hide it. Who'd want a BlackBerry? Oh. Oh, people that are doing it. Oh. Got something to hide. Get a BlackBerry. So it turns out, though, it wasn't actually so totally hidden. Isn't that cool? I love it when the bad guy finds out that his secret crypto network didn't work. Like in Europe, where that entire human trafficking system is going down, and where that criminal activity that was all going on in crypto online, and guess what? Oh, I was a crypto ranger in the army. Crypto ranger. We went and worked on crypto computers back in the early days. I mean, early days. When we didn't even have LED lights in those days in our computers in the army. That's old. Old school. But here's the point. No secrets anymore, guys. Isn't that great? And when I got a bunch of autistic kids out there, or kids that have a little bit of uh, Asperger's, and they just like to concentrate, focus, and go, and they're out there webbling, and man, they're digging up some information, making some correlations, synthesizing, synthesizing. This and this and this and this and putting it together and giving us this really nice model of exactly what happened and how somebody came in and say stole votes and how these impossible statistics go up there where how is it possible to get a hundred thousand votes for one person and zip not a nothing for another person in an hour no less. Oh, and by the way, during a time when nobody's counting. Magic. The book I'm writing about is about magic. All the magic that goes on. You know, I was a magician as a child. I, you know, you know, I do slide of hand tricks and uh, card tricks and you know, pulling the rabbit out of the hat, except I was too poor to afford a rabbit, so we had to kind of fake it. But the thing about magic trick is it doesn't necessarily have to be magic. This is sleight of hand. What is sleight of hand? That means you look over here, and I'm going to do this over here. And while you're looking the other way, I'm going to do my little trick, and I'll say, hey, look over here. Oh, how did I get there? And you go, oh, I don't know. I was looking over there. Guess what? Earthquakes. 111, the meter topped out five years ago at 35, which was an average of the last five years. Then it went up to like 50, 60, 80. So we quit redlining all the time because we kept getting more and more earthquakes. Yeah. And as of this morning, when I checked just a little while before I did this, we had 175 earthquakes on, in the world. That's not so bad. Actually, it is bad. Why? 111 of them. That means we pegged out the red line and then they moved the red line from 83 to 90 to 99 and we pegged it out again. We're at 111 and they're going to move it again. So all the people looking at the gauge when it's going, eh, red line, red line, emergency, hit the brakes, hit the brakes, hit the brakes. Ah, what the hell's happening? Well, we don't know. Remember I mentioned Thumper at the beginning of the week? I said some things about make peace with yourself. 
I love you's to yourself we talked about in the mirror. The me. These two eyes. The pineal gland, if you're not frozen up and calcified from abuse all your life, your spiritual eye, supposedly. Supposedly. It's a fictional story, guys. Don't be going and jabbering me and sticking me pins because you think I'm talking voodoo. It's a story. Everybody tells stories. They do. There's a lot of stories about Jesus. I have a lot of respect. A lot of respect for the man. I really do. 200 years after he died, they said he went to heaven. They started writing about how he went directly to heaven right after that night. It didn't actually happen that way, but hey, the apostles weren't there. They were scared. They didn't go to the crucifixion. They didn't. So when we start talking about all these things, people talk about religion and stuff like that. It's like if we, all of us, all of us eyes are going to get together, we can't be separated because, oh, gee, you believe that only Jesus spoke the word in a certain portion of the life that he supposedly lived. But over in India, he died at 80 years old as a temple of form and imprints of the, the nails that went through his feet where he was crucified. And the story that goes on from the man of Galilee that was then entertained by kings around the world afterwards. This is very controversial stuff, but there are books written about it. Yeah, deeply researched, pinned down books about what a very special person tried to tell the world. And he sacrificed himself. Yeah, eight hours on the cross. Now you're known to live up to 24 hours in those days on the cross, as long as you didn't break your legs, which they had to do to the other two guys, supposedly, in the storyline. And then, and because it was on Friday going to Saturday, and you don't do that on Saturday, so they said, take him down, put him into the tomb, bring him back out on Sunday, and then let him hang out there for everybody to see for the next, how long does it take to rot? Only thing was, he wasn't there the next day. Isn't that great? crazy thing is he appeared in India later on talked about in other places afterwards and he was known as the greatest traveler in the world there's a shrine a place supposedly that he actually went to a place where Mary was buried actually named Mary a lot of stories in a fictional world in a fictional world that I'm writing about, that God made possible, a God, lots of names. But ultimately, if there's only one source of everything that materialized, it's not some guy up there going, oh yeah, let me see, I'm gonna be black today. No, I'm gonna be uh, Native American today. Why don't I just be all at once? <sighs> Works for me. Pieces of God, thought, materialized, what, manifested. Catherine, that's a new one. Lots of different names, lots of different cultures, lots of different ways of trying to say something, draw something, express something that you feel from the inside. That light that shines through the gelatinous shell that we have incarnated as called a body or a vessel. If you want to look at scripture, it says, honor thy vessel. If you don't, this isn't heaven on earth. This is hell on earth. You're in pain. You're in agony. You're just suffering that Mental, because you cause it, because your own mind can't escape your trials and, error and errors. And your lessons that you've been given so you could learn and make it as you get older, coming up toward my age. And take those lessons and turn that experience and knowledge into wisdom. So those behind you got to look at you and go, hey, I want to be like that person. So maybe one day when I get old, I can help out young people. Some of those who don't get a break. And don't forget, I got that no finance, possibly no money down for truthful young people who want to build tiny houses or villages or communities. Man's and man's of dollars and materials. In a fantasy land that I can materialize into reality with a truck and a trailer showing up and the right people coming. And then go off and expand the pure salvage living renaissance. A renaissance is a Reemergence of a perspective, of a design, of a thought, of a way of thinking. In architecture, they had a renaissance of different types of architecture. This is sort of a Victorian renaissance, because I happen to like Victorian stuff, and I have a huge collection of Victorian stuff, because during that period of time when 12-year-olds were carrying coal out of the mines, 
And stocking all of the furnaces, they made the most incredible hardware in the world. I got a bunch of it. I love it. I collected it. Why? It doesn't look so good melted down and turned into a giant um, artillery shell in the backside of a Chinese warship. Which, incidentally, a lot of our salvage metals that we pulled out of the ground and took and did all that stuff with while we had an industry here has now been successfully shipped overseas. Unless you salvage it. You find me a mine you can pull iron ore out of for $60 a thousand pounds for the iron ore and put it on a truck from a guy that'll call, haul it down the road for $60 a thousand pounds to a foundry where they're going to have all that energy to go ahead and convert that iron ore into the best iron in the world and steels in the world, which we did make in the United States, in Pittsburgh, in Philadelphia, in all the Northeast where all my hardware was made, Bethlehem, and all those beautiful no longer industry places. And we sold for dirt cheap as salvage metals all those treasures. Can we stop now? Ray Dalio, yeah, $5 million a minute, one of those great guys out there that has made fortunes, absolutely fortunes, and um, making, of course, money, doing money deals. How do you hide all this debt? How do you go ahead and restructure it? How do you go ahead and make billions of dollars off of that? He was going to buy some of my houses once upon a time, a long time ago, three of them. We got close. My only last thing I asked him to do in a mere 15 minutes of his time, 14 minutes, that's $5 million a minute. That's a large chunk of time before we kill the deal. I'm supposed to go to Massachusetts, three houses. My only request was, Ray, if you would make a statement to Americans that we have the largest treasure through salvage, the largest standing virgin forest in the world, hidden inside of barns, buildings, and houses, longleaf pine, the best wood, cypress, of anything on the planet that you could cut down today. And why would you cut it down if it was that good? I don't want to cut anything down. I want to take down all buildings and pull those vast treasures of pre-cut, seasoned, cured wood that was outlawed in the 60s by the lumber industry working with the government to make code that says you can't use it again to build. I disagree. And I proved it tiny Texas houses. I prove you can build out of pure salvage, no imports, no toxins, no plastics, no endocrine disruptive compounds from vinyls. You can build and not have to make glass, which costs a fortune to melt sand. You can build it and not make a sink because you got old sinks all over the place. They got porcelain on them. Took 2,400 degrees. <laughs> Let's talk carbon. If you want to talk it, let's talk energy savings. Let's talk about houses that cool themselves to 80 degrees when it's 107 outside with the air blowing through the windows using the Venturi effect. This is what research and development is about. And loopholes. How do you build it? And use less energy than anybody else. And the energy you save by not having to cut trees and not make glass and not make metal and not do all that shit, I can actually have that house last 100 years. And it will. And it won't use up as much energy in 100 years as it would have taken to make all that stuff and to cut it all. Average house lasts 15, 25 years. So the house lasts four times as long, costs nothing virtually to make. And you think I'd get some backing from the country. Well, I didn't get it when Obama was in there. All those lefties, all those environmentalists, not a dang one of them has come in. As soon as it started to be popular, they blacked me out canceled me, took me out of magazines, stopped writing about it, stopped letting it go on TV, and I wouldn't go on TV and lie, so they wouldn't have me ever have a show. No, we want to go and sell you toxic little boxes you can make in a factory and call them good. RVs, recreational vehicles, that by federal law, you're not allowed to live in for more than 48 hours sequentially. Consecutively. In other words, a weekend. Because they're unhealthy, toxic boxes that a bunch of people are in right now up north, trying to stay warm in, not understanding that if you have any sort of flame in there otherwise, you've used up what little oxygen you're going to have left because you're breathing 500 gallons an hour sitting there idly meditating, 750 if you're getting excited over what I'm saying, and if you're making mad passion, 1,000 gallons or more each an hour in an hour's time, and you only got 6,500 gallons if you're lucky. Total air inside that sealed up little box. And once that's gone, people are going to start suffocating. And it makes me sick. 
People are told they can go and live in those little boxes full of chemicals and they close them up right now and they're heating up and all those chemicals going out and guess where they're going, kids? Into your lungs. Respiratory problems. Do you think COVID's bad? Okay. Real quick. Endocrine disruptive compounds mimic estrogen. <sighs> chronic inflammation causes cancer. If you get into a house like that and you're chronically lacking oxygen, you're going to have problems. I always say, by the way, in the morning when you wake up and you're already about 4,000 gallons of air to the negative, hypoxic, barely able to really breathe oxygen because it's not inside the box you sealed up. Oh, and how's Junior downstairs doing all night long? Yeah, down where the air is really crappy, thick, and trashy. How's Junior down there while you're sleeping in the loft all night long, trying to stay warm on a very cold night? And God forbid, don't you use a gas heater inside that small box. That said, these are horrible, horrible, record-breaking, low, cold times. I asked, I pleaded, I begged, look in that mirror. Say I love you. Make peace with yourself. Unconditional love. No, oh, but I would, I would love you if you weren't such a whatever. Don't. Ten times in a row. When you can say that to yourself without qualifying it ten times in a row, you completed this very simple exercise that took me 30 days. 30 days of every day, failing to make it ten times in a row. I made it ten times, but not without qualifying it. I have to go start over, start over, start over. I couldn't, yeah. I didn't love myself. Why is that important? Before the week's out, you may need help. You may need to help people that love you or you need me. Help people you love. You need to get right. You go outside right now with a wind chill at 25 below zero and you ain't right with God and you end up right there standing next to him. I hope you got your trash taken care of. Don't leave it for somebody else, please. And also, by the way, here's the big problem. All those people depending on you, if you don't love you, how are you going to love them? And when I say love, that means take action. Fix yourself up. Make thy vessel strong. Because right now, guess what? We ain't getting a truck through Texas for a week. A week and a lot of the north. And guess who's going to bring you groceries inside those cities that have no more than a two-week supply of food on the shelves? And if a truck doesn't show up, they got nothing. They could be you. I said stock up. I said prepare. I said, get heaters, because the electric might go down. I said, get propane gas. Please, check on your neighbors. Somebody didn't do it. Watch for them. My friends, I would like to say it's going to be over quickly. It's not. We didn't get into the politics of it, but I want to assure you, before the month is out, just like I said, this is not going to be the world that you entered into, that you expected. This is going to be a different world, a very different fantasy-like, surreal world that I'm writing about. Writing about, remember? Censors, ah, caught you at the end. You're like, going to get me and trolls, by the way. I wanted to mention something. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought there was a troll right there. Oh, get him off. I really appreciate all your support. We don't get a lot of traffic. Share if you care. I hate it when everybody's always saying, reach down there, push on that button, say you like it, all that crap. I'm not really out to worry about that stuff, but I do want the word to get out there because some people, they're taking life a little too seriously or not serious enough. Got to be able to laugh. Got to be able to smile. Love y'all.